we want to explain what uh, the meaning of current is and for these slides to watch them properly you should watch them in slideshow mode because there are some animations so what is the definition of current think about it for a few seconds and uh, write down your answer and then try and see if the answer that you gave fits the description that we're going to describe uh, in, a, in a while. So first thing you need to do when you want to talk about current is you need to define what area we're talking about. You need to define an area in space. Second thing, you need to choose a side of the area to look at what's happening to the charge on that side. So you can choose the right side or you can choose the left side. And this is, an, this is a very subtle point because the, the current, if it's going to be positive or negative, it depends on this choice. So you can solve everything we're gonna do right now in two different ways. The first way by, by looking at what happens on the right side, and the second way by looking at what happens on the left side. And those two ways will give different answers in terms of the sign of the current. So there's some convention, you have to choose, you have to make a choice. For an open surface, it's all up to you. You choose which side you want to consider to, to be the side to monitor the charge on. So in this problem, we're going to, in these slides, we're going to choose the right side to see what happens on the right side. And things will be clear as we proceed. So let's look at this example. You have some charges, positive charges, and initially they're on the left side. So that means the charge on the right side is zero at this point in time, at zero, times zero. And now monitor what happens to this red dot as time progresses. You see that when the charge goes through the surface, the amount of charge on the right side that crossed the surface increases. And so the definition of average, the average current during this amount of time delta T, it's delta Q over delta T, the final charge minus the initial charge divided by the time. The final charge on the right side minus the initial charge on the right side that crossed the surface divided by the time. So is this going to be positive or negative for this particular case? For this particular case, it's positive because the amount of charge on the right side got more positive, it increased. So Q final minus Q initial is a positive value. So the average current in this case is a positive value. Let's look at this case. In this case, you still have positive charges and they're going to cross the area, but now initially they all exist on the right side already at time zero. So if you look at the plot of Q at time zero, there, they, there is an amount of positive charge on the right side. So the amount of charge is a positive value. Now look what happens as the time goes on. The amount of positive charge on the right side decreased due to the fact that some charge crossed the area. And so in this case, if you get delta Q, is it going to be positive or negative? In this case, it's going to be negative. So in this case, this average current is a negative current. So you see that the, 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 both cases, case one and case two, positive charges were going through this area. But in one case, the, current, the average current was positive, And in one case, it was negative. So there's some subtle issue about the sign that is important to get proper. Let's see what happens if we have initially negative charge on the right side. So that means if I plot Q as a function of T, the charge initially at time zero is a negative value. And then watch, the, watch what happens as the animation proceeds. The amount of negative charge on the right side gets less, gets less negative. So it's getting bigger. The amount of charge on the right side is getting bigger. So in this case, does this correspond to a positive current or a negative current? It corresponds to a positive current because the final charge is bigger than the initial one. Okay, what about case four? What if you start out with all the negative charge on the left side and nothing on the right side, and at time zero then, the charge on the right side is zero. And as the time goes on, let's look what happens. The amount of charge on the right side starts to become more negative. So in this case, what is delta Q? Well, delta Q obviously is Q final minus Q initial. It's a negative value because the charge is getting less on the right side as time pr proceeds. 
So this corresponds to a negative current. So to summarize, if you want to talk about current, you need to, to define an area and you need to choose a side that you want to monitor what's happening to the charge on that side due to the fact that some charges are going through the surface. There's no reason to choose the right side. You could choose the left side. And so that's why there's, you have to define, you have to, before you solve the problem, you have to make this choice. Later on, we're going to see how this issue of choice can be written down in a nice mathematical way so that we can um, see, and then we'll see the correspondence between this intuitive way of looking at it and the more mathematical way.